Let's take you now to Abuja Studios where Ibrahim Adra has some more stories for you. Hello, Ibrahim. Hello, Melissa, and good to see you. Well, let's start with a rather emotional scenario. The governor, Kashim Shetima, could not hold back his emotions today when he and other leaders of the Northeast region met with President Muhammad Buhari over the security situation in the region. The governor, with teary eyes, said that the leaders are confident that the president can tackle the security challenge in the region and restore peace to the state. Our consistent support, and we seriously have supported and continue to support all military agencies, particularly the Nigerian army. Yet in previous years, we were time enemies of the state. Mr. President, sir, we are here because we knew you would warmly welcome us without any suspicion or contempt. We knew you would listen to us with absolute sincerity and compassion. We are here because since 2015, Mr. President, you were able to restore our hope. So you have demonstrated empathy for Borno and the overriding commitment to ending the Boko Haram. This is why we rush here on witnessing some setbacks. We are here because we trust that Allah will use you to fully reclaim Borno's traditional glory of being the home of peace. Mr. President, sir, we are here as a people who walked, prayed, and waited for your presidency in the palm and undying belief that with you as Commander-in-Chief, Boko Haram will become history in Borno. Mr. President, we have not, and inshallah, will not lose hope in you, because as I said, we have witnessed and survived worse moments before you came. We do not feel hopeless. Our hopes are very much alive, and they are very high. Your Excellency, we came with some observations and 10 specific requests for urgent presidential intervention. These observations and requests are products of discussions in the aftermath of our extraordinary security meeting held one week ago. We didn't rush to come after the meeting. We felt the need to, to travel to northern Borno, interact with displaced persons and the military so as to strengthen public confidence. Meanwhile, leaders of the Northeast believe that the president's re-election will consolidate on existing successes. A delegation of leaders gave their assessment when they met with the president of the state house. A member of the delegation, Senator Alun Dume, announced at the end of the meeting the defection of key leaders in the region to the All Progressives Congress, noting that it signified the end of the People's Democratic Party in that region. These people have decided not only to leave PDP, but to declare their influencing support to the four the second term of Mr. President. We don't want him to go, because if you are to allow this one, if you are to allow him go, that yeah, is, is, is the yeah, end of even the states, particularly the northern state. Look at Borno, how it is now. You cannot sleep outside. You cannot be uh, anywhere. But how he's handling it shows that that energy is there. And still staying in the northeast, armed insurgents have reportedly launched an attack on Auno community in Borno State, dislodging civil authorities in the area. Confirming the incident to channels television, the Borno State Commissioner of Police, Damien Chuku, says the attack occurred at about 6 p.m. today, throwing villages into panic. He, however, says the attack was repelled by security agents. The police believe the attack could be a reprisal as some insurgents were arrested in the same village and handed over to the military, who later conveyed them to the 7th Division headquarters in Maiduguri. Aono is 20 kilometers away from Maiduguri, the Borno State capital, located along the Maiduguri Damaturu Expressway, the only route linking the state to other parts of the country. Our Senator Dino Melae has been certified by the police to be medically fit to stand trial in the case of alleged attempted culpable homicide preferred against him. 
the Assistant Inspector General of Police Medical, AIG Kaomi Amudu, who gave the certification at the police clinic in Area 1 of Abuja, Metropolis, said the senator has been receiving good and quality Medicare. Although Senator Melae claims he needs further and better Medicare, the police promise to continue to take care of him pending when he will be arraigned in court. You remember when he was rushed here, he had an acute asthmatic attack. He was brought in from the SARS facilities. And we managed his acute asthmatic attack. He came out of asthma. And then since then, we had an incidental finding of malaria and typhoid fever. Along the way, he raised complaints of some symptoms suggestive of some nerve functions. We took him to a specialist center where he was reviewed by three specialists. Specialists that are concerned on the brain, spinal cord, and the nerve roots, what we call the neurologists. And then uh, the specialist who is concerned about the heart, the cardiologist, and also the specialist of the very organ that he had the initial problem. That is the lungs, where he had an acute asthmatic attack. The pulmonologist, pulmonologist also reviewed him. All this long, we've been managing him. And thank God, he's in good health now. At every moment, if there is any cause for us to invite a specialist or take him to a specialist center, we oblige him. At this moment, his, blood, uh, his uh, pulse rate this morning is 82 per minute, which is normal. His blood pressure this morning is 120, 90 millimeters of mercury. Remember, he's a non-hypertensive and asthmatic. For a non-hypertensive to have a sustained blood pressure of 120, 90 millimeters of mercury is an indication of good management of the hypertension. He also has a respiratory rate of 20 per minute. So, by and large, he's in sound health. Now, in another development, the ongoing trial of five suspects accused of robbing five banks and killing of 33 people in Ofakwara State was today stalled at the State High Court Ilori due to the non-appearance of witnesses and exhibits by police to prosecute the case. The Director of Public Prosecution, Jimo Mumini, explained in court that AID David Ibodo of the Force Headquarters needs to produce the witnesses in court. The judge, Justice Halima Salman, while ruling, vacated the order of definite hearing earlier, giving on November the 30th and adjourned till 18th of this month. Well, simply we were unable to proceed because uh, the office of the AIG in charge of legal, who superintended the investigation of this case, and of course the office of the DCP, Abba Kiari, were unable to send our witnesses and the exhibits we intend to proceed with today. Uh, we were forced to plead with the court, of course, that the court should give us another date. Despite the fact that we had written letters earlier, from 10 December last year, informing them of the need to produce these witnesses in court today, unfortunately they were unable to so do. We are prepared, from the Ministry of Justice prepared, we are set to fire. I mean, the cases are clear, there is no ambiguity about this case, it's a straightforward thing. But uh, we cannot make cases outside witnesses. I am disappointed, that's all. You are correct. I am hoping okay. that on the 18th, they will do the needful to come up. In fact, I ought to even have the evidence before that day so that it will enable me to have the opportunity to prepare in respect of the matter properly for the accused persons. Because if they are not availed the evidence that they are going to confront them with, uh, I mean, it's like trying to ambush somebody or taking them by surprise.
Melissa, that's it from Abuja. It's back to you in Lagos. Many hey, thanks, Ibrahim. And after over two months of academic inactivity in government universities across the country, the federal government has finally reached an agreement with the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU. Addressing journalists after a meeting with the union's leadership in Abuja, the Minister of Labor and Employment says the majority of demands by the striking lecturers, including the release of 15.4 billion naira for payments of salary shortfalls, have been met. Meanwhile, the president of ASU maintains that the National Executive Committee of ASU will review their decisions based on the new commitments by the federal government. According to him, it is only after that meeting of the ASU leadership that the union will announce its position on the ongoing strike action. Let's now bring you some business news. Here's Imana Amawe. You first. First Bank. Many thanks, Millicent. Welcome to Business News. The president of the World Bank, Jim Young Kim, today announced that he will step down from his position by the end of January, three years before his term expires in 2022. Kim's departure from the Washington-based Brenton Woods Institution comes as a surprise as he was voted for a second five-year term in 2017 after spending six years in office. No reason has been given for his unexpected resignation. A statement from the World Bank says the Korean-born American plans to join a firm focused on infrastructure investments in developing countries. Meanwhile, the institution's chief executive officer, Kristalina Jajiva is expected to assume the role of interim president with effect from January the 1st, February the 1st. The Federal Inland Revenue Service says it collected a total of 5.32 trillion naira as revenue from taxes in 2018. The executive chairman of the FIIS, Mr. Tunde Fowler, who made this known today at a retreat in Lagos, says the amount is the highest revenue ever generated in the agency's history, compared to 5.07 trillion naira generated in 2012. Mr. Fowler is also seeking the support of the National Assembly for laws enabling increased revenue generation from the digital economy. Very early in the year, the Federal Inland Revenue Service is already galvanizing energies, ideas, comparing notes with international best practice, hoping to produce a roadmap on how they can be better at what they do, collecting taxes and driving revenue. The focus at this retreat is digital economy. Taxes need enabling laws to be effective in collection, so most of the participants here are members of the National Assembly. The thinking is to have them listen, then subsequently initiate tax laws in that direction. In this dynamic environment that we find ourselves, the digital economy and other reasons, we have come up with initiatives to ensure that we have a robust tax administration that is beneficial to all stakeholders. The parliament is here. The 2019 budget has not yet been approved, but we hear in the corridors of power that the target for FIS is in the region of 8 trillion naira. And with their support and the support of all taxpayers, we believe it is achievable. According to the experts, Nigeria is five years behind South Africa and three years behind Kenya in capturing revenues from the digital economy should an enabling law take effect today. But like the saying goes, it's never late to start. The traditional task loss cannot adequately task the digital economy. It's obvious. The developed and the developed countries are working together to say how do we address this issue. We therefore need to leverage the relevant task initiative to get our own fair share of the income from the digital economy. And a suggestion is we should possibly put a committee in place and look at the suggestions that are in the OECD document. Uh, you want to, see to which the parliamentarians are already showing signs of cooperation. I want to assure you of our commitment and support in ensuring that your mandate are achieved. The National Assembly has and will continue to support every viable means that will lead to an efficient tax system under the digital economy. This is where we're having it. When eventually applicable, as backed by law, the potential revenue from digital platforms are projected to be very significant. 
Hello, Phillips. Channel still with news. At the domestic stock market, trading got up to a negative start for the week as more profit-taking pushed month-to-date losses to 3.28%. Tenny Ola Shubawali tells us more. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Sell pressure entered the second trading week of January at the NSC after dominating the first three sessions of the new year. The market's main index ended Monday's session down by 0.78%, while total value of listed equities dropped by 89 billion naira on lingering concerns by portfolio investors over the upcoming elections. Profit taken affected some key components of the four major sectors, especially the consumer goods, while the industrial goods eked out a 0.05% gain. NEM insurance and resort savings and loans tops a list of 34 losers, up by 10%, while Diamond Bank led 12 other gainers and is the major contributor to a total of 222.58 million shares traded today. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Teniola Shubawali. Meanwhile, major stock markets in the United States and across Asia closed today's session higher as a new round of trade talks between the world's two largest economies begin today in Beijing. But it's mixed performance for European markets following concerns over economic growth, Brexit and the U.S. government shutdown. And that's business news tonight. I'm Emana Amawe. It's back to you, Millicent. You first. First Bank. Thank you, Emana. Still ahead on the News at 10, Confederation of African Football, CAF, expected to announce the host of the 2019 African Cup of Nations after its ESCO meeting in Dakar. That's in Sports News. Please stay with us.